It is our Friday nightcap, and we have got an excellent one. Jay Johnson, former Secretary of Homeland Security. My colleague, Andrew Ross Sorkin, co-anchor of CNBC's Squawk Box and founder of the New York Times Deal Book. Andrea Bernstein, award-winning ProPublica and NPR journalist and author of American Oligarchs, The Kushners, The Trumps, and The Marriage of Money and Power. And the one and only Charlemagne the God is here, best-selling author, co-host of The Breakfast Club and The Black Effect Podcast Network, Creator, there is so much to cover, and I'm so glad you are all here. And we're definitely starting with Donald Trump. Choosing a jury, right? If it's a classified documents case, are they yes. going to need to see the doc? Like, how is all this even going to work? Excellent question. I wonder that myself. This is a case all about classified documents at the TS level. And the jury, depending on how it's charged, has to be satisfied that what he did compromised national security and was an act of espionage, the Espionage Act. How can you do that unless you actually see the documents? And so do we give 12 random jurors off the street security clearances so that they can see T.S. level stuff? That's a real challenge. Isn't that an easy spin for Trump, though? Because right. Trump can just say, hey, they found classified exactly. documents with uh, President Biden as well. And, you know, it's not like a jury has been ignoring the news and doesn't know that. So can't Trump say that person did it, that person did it, that person well, did it? Why are they make, coming after me? It's just another that. witch hunt. But in yeah, those but, cases, yeah. there's no criminal intent. I'm not sure it actually changes what the American... The, the, to the extent there's members of this, the American public that want to support this man... That's right. I don't think it changes their view one iota. I think I, I say that right. sadly, by the way. I don't, I don't say that happily. But I think that the, you sort of, it's like you have to segregate the question of what the rule of law requires and what is going to sway the American people. You cannot give up on it by saying, well, it won't make a difference. With oh, the I'm not saying public, don't do right? it. I'm just saying, you know, you say, what's the implication of it? And I'm not sure there is one. Well, Poll numbers I mean, went up after New York, right? I mean, if the implication is in the election, but also to the former president. I mean, right. he faces a criminal trial already in right. New York uh, on 34 felony counts. His business was already convicted. It's all shocking. And, and yet, right. look at the poll numbers, and you have no, to... I mean, I, and then I'm I shocked. Because I, I don't like, mean, how is this even the, possible? They, they should be indicting him because it's the right thing to do. Because, you know, in this country, there uh, should be consequences and repercussions for your actions. Is right? your audience paying attention to any of this? Our audience is paying attention, but like what Andrew said, you know, the people who support Trump are going to support Trump regardless. And like I said, it's an easy spin for him to say this is just a witch hunt, so it makes them support him even more. But I go back to the fact that they should be trying to indict Trump because he broke the law. Nobody is above the law. They keep saying nobody. They keep saying nobody's above the right. law. But boy, Look he proves the, it, I mean, he proves us wrong. I, I said this at the time when the the kid in Massachusetts in the Air National Guard, the 21 year old, was indicted for violations of the Espionage Act. People are entitled to say, well, why not the former president, That's who right. also may have shared classified information with people not allowed to see it. I I've been wrong about Donald Trump so many times, but I tend to believe that even for Trump supporters, there comes a tipping point after indictment number three or four. How can I vote for somebody for president who's constantly going to pretrial conferences and suppression hearings in his cases? Uh, and who, uh, and who might actually go to jail. During the presidential primary and the presidential uh, you know, general election. So. And, and Andrew, think about, I get what you're saying, like <clears throat> Trump's base is his base, but the MAGA base is not enough to win an election. Oh, think about right. big GOP donors. They're all over Wall Street. And what did they do this week? A whole lot of them gave Chris Christie money yes. and told him to get in the race, knowing that he might not get the nomination, right. but they're like, I just want to see somebody right. punch they're Trump in the face. They're desperate for anything at this point. I mean, if this is Moneyball, and we're now into the Moneyball game of, of, not, of not just an election, but, you know, who's going to support who and who's going to get the get the dough, yes, they want to punch him. But at the, at the end of the day, the big money puts money in the end behind who they think is going to win. Mm-hmm. They may be they're right now. They're playing this other game, but they want to know who's going to win. And then they'll put money behind. Now, will will they put money behind Trump in the end? Yes, that's, that's a yes. that's a G- I mean, I yes. think that's the this is the, <laughs> that's a, that's this the is question. The I, you can, I, mean, I, I can think, hardly even say it aloud. You know, so you guys the, can, you know, why is he here? Why are we where we are today? Because people keep making this bargain right. that they are not that there is no clear. There is no red line. Like people right. thought one six was a red, li- a red line. People weren't going to do business with him anymore. And then they did. They came back. Yo, the GOP would put money behind Freddy Krueger if he became the nominee. Like, they don't care. Like, if, they, if, they, if their guy had the chance to win or their girl had the chance to win, they're going to get behind him. They'll talk all of this crazy stuff about said individual until they become the nominee. Okay, well, then let's say it is Joe Biden versus Donald Trump. 
Is America going to get excited about the election? Are they going to turn out? Think about your viewers, right? How, you, you have interviewed <laughs> so how, many, how many candidates, how many presidents? Mm -hmm. Are people going to get excited if it's a Trump-Biden face-off again? Excited is a strong word. You know, will American people <laughs> vote? Be yes, but will they be excited to but vote? Probably be excited to vote against, against somebody. Right, right. Because both sides actually will be scared. That's what it'll be. Yeah. Both sides are scared. You talk to Republicans, mm -hmm. they're scared yeah. of what they see as a Biden administration that they don't like. And it, if you talk to Republicans, they say that, uh, if you talk, talk to Democrats, they say they are scared of Trump. Remember the voter participation levels went up. In yeah, in 2020, I mean, I think that's it. Yeah. That people, it was the same race and it was historic. Yeah, I don't think we're voting individuals ever when it comes to Trump and Biden. We're voting ideologies, right? Mm -hmm. like, yeah, you know, like it's existential. That's right. <laughs> like, I don't think you're, 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 you don't care whether it's Biden or Trump. I just think you, you know, you might think, hey, do you want fascism or do you want the company that's, the, 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 the party that's going to be kind of just regular and normal? I okay, guess. well, Trump has, is facing a lot of bad legal news. But business-wise, he had to have had a really good week, right? This live PGA new merger, this Saudi-backed, you know, golf league, Trump has been in business with them. They've had a number of tournaments at Trump clubs. You know, lots of people have issues with the Saudis. The Trumps certainly don't. Right. Saudis gave Jared Kushner, who with no investing experience, two billion dollars to invest. What does a deal like this mean for Donald I Trump think and this his is business? Sort of what's mind blowing. I mean, I had a whole line of reporting for four years, a podcast called Trump Inc. about how Trump did not separate his personal business from his presidency. And here we are. He's running again and he is doing business with the Saudis. And it's mind blowing not only that that's happening and that people are not even talking about it. And what's so interesting is with this golf situation. You know, when the PGA after January 6th said they were not going to go to Bedminster and they, you know, felt like they went, didn't want to like actually be on Trump golf courses, it was a blow to Trump for sure, people in that world told me. And now they're all back, one big happy family, the PGA, the Live Tournament, which is Saudi-backed, and presumably they will be at many Trump courses. And that is, you know, the same thing of how Trump manages to keep sort of co-opting and ending up on top again. But Trump aside, this was a huge surprise in the world of sports, in golf. I mean, people have even been angry at Joe Biden that he didn't go after MBS in the way that they thought he would. What is your take on this? Because the hypocrisy alone from the PGA for, for all of this right. time, bashing Liv, bashing the Saudis, standing arm in arm with 9-11 widows. We will never do business with human rights violators. Oh, I guess we will for the big dollar. Well, I think two things. I think there's the hypocritical part of it. I think they were boxed in from a negotiating standpoint. I think they saw the handwriting on the wall because I think they knew over the next couple of years that Liv was going to have to compete with them in a terrible, terrible way. There's this antitrust suit. But I think what it really says, maybe even larger, that these American pastimes, these American sports industries, if you will, that we thought were ours, and that's soft power to the rest of the world, I think are now open for business and potentially takeover targets. What's to, what is to say that Saudi or somebody else doesn't call up Steph Curry and LeBron and a couple other players and say, you know what, we're going to start a three-on-three -three league. All we, need, we just need to get 16 players, 20, you know, 21 players, and we're going to go do that. And they take $500 million each a year. For enough money, they'll and, say and yes. And a year or two from now, just like the mob, they'll call up uh, Adam Silver and they'll say, hey, you know, we, I know, you know maybe it would be better if we were just all together, don't you think? We, we'd like to take you over. I mean, you could, by the way, you could do it in tennis. Not, probably a lot easier to do in tennis. Harder probably for the NFL or Major League Baseball. But I just think it changes the whole dynamic of what's at play here. How does Tiger Woods feel? Oh, Should have took that money. Right? Yeah, <laughs> furious. Eight hundred million dollars. He wow. said, "No, I'm standing with the PGA," and they said, "Well, we're not." Yeah. yeah. But how do you decide, right? What money is bad? We could all argue you should not do business with the Saudis, and the mm -hmm. counter argument is there's bad money everywhere. There's bad people everywhere. Well, you have to separate the PGA live deal from the foreign policy of the United States. And whether you're dealing with Saudi, whether you're dealing with China, whether you're dealing with Turkey, whether you're dealing with Western Europe or even Russia, foreign policy is multi, it's always multidimensional. And we have relations with countries that are that with far less than perfect human rights records when it's in our strategic interest to do so. The Trump administration made one judgment about Saudi Arabia. Joe Biden on the campaign trail made another judgment about Saudi Arabia. And now he's actually been there. And so 
the Biden administration. Fist bump, not just been there. Fist right. bump. Fist he's, bump. He's in the same place Trump was. Yes. Correct. But, Almost the same place. But, Almost. But, Close. Yes. Right. Donald Trump is personally profiting from the Saudi government, which Joe Biden, so far as we know, is not. Uh, I, so correct. I just Jared think Kushner that, certainly is. you know, his first his international family, trip I mean, was I to Saudi. I mean, I just think that the idea that he is sort of running now and still openly doing business with a foreign power, you know, in 2016, when this came up, you know, Trump was like, you know, I have no business with Russia, which wasn't true, but he felt like he needed to say that. Now it's not mm -hmm. even an issue. And I think that it is very problematic. Yeah, but the if, problem is, after Trump, we heard Democrats say, and we're going to change the rules so this yeah, can never it. happen again, right. that no president could ever do this. And yes. lo and behold, Correct. nobody changed the rules. Correct. And if he wins again, we'll be right back in it. Why are we acting surprised about any of this, though? Wu-Tang told us in the 1900s, cash rules everything around me. And in America, capitalism rules everything around me. They all go after the money.